Sorry. Okay. All right, so thank you everyone for your patience. Um, my name is Susie Velsor and I'm the special ed coordinator at Southington High School. I'm joined by Amy Oresco, who's the special ed coordinator at the middle school and my department leader, who is Jill McAloon. Um, so this presentation, I'm laughing because Jen's bouncing it back and forth. I know, is this a second Special one? ed services at Southington High School, what to expect. Um, so this is just gonna be a brief overview if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to any of us at any time or your child's current case manager. So one of the big questions I get is how do, how do I know who my student's case manager is and when does that get assigned? So at Southington High School, we make sure that students see their case manager in at least one of their classes. Um, if we finalize case management assignments over the summer, as Jen referenced, referenced in the presentation, there are a lot of schedule tweaks happening. Um, so we wait for schedules to really settle down and be finalized before we finalize those case manager assignments. Then we do it based on who students see. At the high school, we offer a continuum of services to provide students instruction in their least restrictive environment. So we have our survey classes for all our core subjects, so science, math, English, and social studies. And that's in the resource setting. It's in a small setting with only 14 students, and that's taught by a special ed teacher and there are only special ed students in that classroom. So it is not considered time with non-disabled peers. Um, it's a very small setting catered towards students' needs. We also offer co-taught classes for English and math, very similar to the middle school. Uh, those are taught by a special ed teacher and a general education teacher. And we have two self-contained programs here at the high school. And those are continuations of the self-contained programs that are housed at DePaulo and Kennedy. And that is the Comprehensive Learning Center and the Therapeutic Learning Center. Um, all special education hours for your student will be discussed at a PPT and decided upon at that PPT. And while students are at the high school, just like at the middle school, you can request a PPT at any time if you need to adjust hours, change accommodations, or have any concerns in general. So placement and the PPT process. So at your child's upcoming PPTs, um, as we approach the winter and the spring, transition will be discussed. We work very closely with the eighth grade case managers, so they're aware of our course offerings. Many of them have come up to visit. They've seen what our courses look like, so they can best place their students based on what we offer. Um, you'll notice that Jen had referenced the registration portal prior in terms of entering those elective courses. When the portal does open, you are going to want to submit your recommendations. You'll notice the special education hours are not in there. That's because that's a PPT decision. So don't worry about that. When the portal does open, have your child input their electives and make sure you submit so that they can get slots in what they'd like. Um, if you have any questions through any point of this process, reach out to your child's current case manager and they can either point you to who you need at the high school or answer those questions directly for you. So I touched on this a little bit, the different special education settings that we have offered. Um, we ha do have the COTOT setting, which is a general education setting, and it's the general ed teacher with the special ed teacher. Block lends itself beautifully to COTOT. There's a lot of time for small groupings, flexible groupings, stations, and things that allow us to really meet our students' IEP goals and objectives and get some good data on that. We also have the resource setting, um, and that is, again, that small setting maximum of 14 students with a special ed teacher. In the resource setting, which is our survey classes, um, we mirror grade level content, but we really use modified text materials and slow it down so that we meet the pace of the students and meet the students where they're at to help them achieve those content standards. We offer two main academic support options at the high school. The first is the study skills option, um, and this is accredited course. So what that means is that there is a curriculum. So students get direction instruction in study skills, organization, self-advocacy, um, really just those different skills that they can apply in their other courses. So it may be annotating, two column notes, um, how to approach a difficult situation if you don't like your grade things like that, but there is a curriculum to it. So the way that it's structured in the 88 minute period, 60 of those minutes is going to be the direct instruction and some activities surrounding that direct instruction. And then the 30 minutes will be 
where students can access math lab if they need to, um, check power school, get that help on the assignments. But the primary focus of study skills is direct instruction and skills for them to be successful in the high school. We also have the learning lab. Um, this is not for credit. So there is no curriculum attached to it. It typically takes the place of a study hall for a student. Um, they go to a classroom with a special ed teacher. Again, it would be a maximum of 14 students in there. And we go through students' power school. We do some transition assessments and interest inventories, things like that. But this is really designed to help them keep pace in their class, help them with the homework they may need, projects they may need, um, pre-teaching and reteaching, and just overall checking in on the coursework. We also offer two special education electives at Southington High School. The first is an adult daily living course. Um, this is for credit. And we really focus on activities of daily living, such as hygiene, cooking, self-advocacy, appropriate social interactions. I did an observation in that class the other day and students were running through scenarios in small groups in terms of challenges they may encounter in school and two ways that they could solve those problems. So it's really focusing on those social pragmatic skills necessary uh, to function within the larger high school as well as post high school. We also offer a vocational activities course. And this course is held in the supermarket in Southington High School. So there's a small convenience store where teachers can purchase snacks, sodas, um, as well as customized napkins, gift baskets. So it really focuses on those skills that students may need if they were to go into employment, um, as well as teamwork and you know social skills as well, because you're dealing with the teachers as they come in and out. But those are two special education electives, and those are both for credit. So these are some frequently asked questions we get. I just wanted them on there as well so you could see them. Again, case manager comes up all the time. We assign them over the summer. And then that first week of school, your child's case manager will reach out um, and let you know that they are the case manager. Just like at the middle school, they'll be your point person for any IEP concerns or just concerns in general. If you're not sure who to go to or how to approach something, your case manager would be a great place to start. Um, how does the PPT process work at Summington High School? So just like at the middle school, your student will have at least an annual review every year, um, as well as a reevaluation if they're due for that. But if at any time you feel like a meeting is necessary, you can request one. I know case managers, if they notice a student is starting to struggle or if they're ready for more of a challenge and we want to adjust those hours, case managers will request one as well. And then our special education secretary works on getting a time set up that works for everyone to hold those meetings. Um, another question is, it's a big school. How do I know how my student is doing in their classes? Uh, you can add yourself as an observer on Canvas to see what projects are occurring when they're due. But the biggest tool I would say at the high school is PowerSchool. Grades are always updated. Um, and that's easy to see what's been turned in and what hasn't. At the high school, if an assignment is missing, teachers will put in zero as a placeholder, but it frequently will have a comment attached to it, such as assignment currently missing, but can be handed in by December 5th. Um, so both Canvas and PowerSchool are a great way to check in on your student and how they're doing, as well as the case manager. Um, so what happens if my student is unsuccessful in their classes? This is a big fear for everyone, uh, and it's something that we never want to happen. So at any time, if we notice the student is being unsuccessful, we'll go to a PPT to see if there's any accommodations or modifications that need to be added um, or strategies that we could try within that class. If we've exhausted all possibilities within that classroom, we'll look at other options for the child in order to meet their least restrictive environment. And last but not least, um, my child has a reader in their accommodations but is not in a supported class. How does this work? So at the high school, we're constantly looking at um, how do we prepare students for post-secondary, whether that be career or education. Um, so even if there is no support in their classroom, our teachers are great about asking and teaching students to use their tools, um, such as the voice to text or text to speech, and, you know, getting them a setting where they're, they can use their technology to have the test read to them. This does mirror the SAT and the screen reader accommodation. So it's good, great for practice, 
great for students to practice uh, every day so that when they get to the SAT, they're not flustered by it and they know how to use the tools. So we would never ask students to take a test or quiz in a room by themselves, but teachers will work with Jill, the department leader, um, in order to assign out a space where it will be supervised so that if they had issues with technology, they could get the assistance they needed and students can use their technology and really be independent in taking those tests and quizzes while still accessing their accommodations. And here are some contacts. So again, I'm Susie Belsor, I'm the special ed coordinator. My email is listed right there. Jill McAloon is our special ed department leader and Brian Reardon is our assistant department leader. Um, and perhaps most importantly, Kim Wilson is our wonderful special education secretary. Um, her number is listed there with her extension because she will direct you to any of us. Um, phones are at a prime at the high school. So if you call her, she'll know exactly where we are and can get to us. Also, if you email any of us, if you'd like to set up a phone call with us, we're happy to do that and arrange a time to speak with you directly.